Good morning. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is Friday. We do not normally ship a uh, ship. We do not normally film on Fridays because we have a lot to do. We have a lot. I got to get shipping out and we have a lot of errands to run, but, but. we're going to film today because we have some cool sales and we have clarity, I feel, in our life, in our business. <laughs> we we really we we've been analyzing and looking at different parts of our business and how we do things and we really have come up with a I think a solid plan an idea and what we need to do to actually see our business grow. So we're going to take take a deep dive today. We're going to go over kind of the history of what we've done since we started yeah. doing this and we're going to talk about the different aspects of the different things we do and we're going to talk about be, the future. That might be interesting for some of our new viewers to yeah. see kind of where we came from and stuff. So. Yeah, very true. But we do have uh, 20, well, one more thing just sold. We got 22 21, things 22. that need to get out of here. Fortunately, most of them are small. But uh, we already pulled them. We're going to go through the first half and we're going to talk and then we'll do the second half. But let's get into that. You have anything else you want to add here at the beginning? Rehomers of stuff. We are full time <laughs> resellers that live in Lincoln, Nebraska. Rehomers of stuff. Go big red. Go big red. All right, cool. Let's get into the whistles. Okay, we got this stuff uh, all pulled, ready to go. First thing first, Donna always likes Tupperware. Tupperware! I used to be a Tupperware consultant, you guys, a long time ago. I, yep. even, I even earned the car, but um, yeah, not anymore. But <laughs> this is a, they went bankrupt. Tupperware did. Yep, yep, they did. This is a lettuce keeper with the little post that goes inside it and the domed lid. And that's all for $13.99. And it's to? going to Florida. Nice. Then we got a pair of these. So there's two. Um, these are the Francoma. We got them from our last clean out. We call yep. that one Harmony Court. And these sold for $19.99. And they're headed to Alaska. Alaska. Yep. Nice. I still like that state. Yep. All right. Next up, we have two of these. These came from um, junk the jaunt. Junk Jaunt buyout we talked about earlier. So two of these Pearberry um, Bath and Body Works cream. Sold for $29.99 and they're going to Arkansas. Arkansas. Speaking of states. I was born in Arkansas. Yes, she was. Hope Arkansas. Hope Arkansas. Arkansas. It was my town before it was anybody else's anybody else's who was the president that was from there i don't i don't, I don't know nothing i'm not a history major uh speaking of states clinton you, we had a lot of fun with our map and i just have to tell you we've been talking off and on about doing something and donna just came no, to me with a brilliant was, idea that came Ruth's from her friend idea. ruth yes yeah ruth had an idea i don't necessarily want to spoil it yet because we're going to try to find a map first to hang up. Yeah. And then once we have the map, then we're going to talk about it. But we do have an idea for a new map so we can track some new fun stuff. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Then next up is Scentsy dish soap. It's called Johnny Appleseed Scent. And that sold for... $13.49. Where'd it come from? It came from the junk jaunt. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's going to California. California. It's going to... It's going to Bakersfield, California, and that is the home place of lots of different people. But Kevin Harvick, who I used to watch NASCAR, and like <laughs> he was my driver uh, way back in the day before we even moved to Lincoln. So before he was even that Bakersfield, awesome. California. Yes. yes. All right. Where did this come from? This came from the junk jaunt, that very same buyout that we found all the senses in the Bath and Body Works at. Steve yep. found these boots for $2. They are Justin boots. They don't look like they've been worn, but maybe once. And yep. those sold for? Sold for $44.99 and they're going to Louisiana. Louisiana. Next we have a little lens cap cover ring i was gonna i was wondering how you were gonna describe it <laughs> it's a sony uh, hood for a lens for a camera uh that came from a friend of ours and that sold for 19.99 and it's going to michigan michigan this one's fun my friend ruth and larry well, i have two friends ruth and larry <laughs> but they like to thrift on their own and they like to find stuff for us and they bring it over 
we had recently sold a white one of these for $34.99 that we got for 25 cents. Well, do you know Ruth found this for 25 cents in Kansas somewhere, garage selling, and she picked it up and it sold like two days after I listed it for $34.99. Yep. And it's going to Illinois. This is a jamber. jamber. So the it's supposed to be an ergonomic uh, handle. Okay. So like when you put it on the, the handle touches too. I mean, it's not going to tip over or anything. Um, anyway. Yeah. Jamber. Watch for jamber. Definitely a good one to find. Mm-hmm. Okay, next up we have this little candle holder. It's milk glass, and we got this from the glass buyout. Sometimes you hear us talk about a glass buyout. We went to Omaha, yep. referred by a friend to someone in Omaha, and he had a humongous glass collection buyout, whatever. So we got that, and we still haven't listed it all. Yeah, that's been like three years ago. Yeah. So I don't know how long this has been on. Long but... time. Uh, Twelve dollars ninety nine cents. It sold for, and it's going to, I think, Ohio. Ohio. It's going to Ohio. Okay. And then this, I don't, I didn't list this one. This is you. Uh, I did. It's a nineteen ninety six U.S. Mint uh, Smithsonian commemorative coin. This came from Iowa, and right there is the coin, and this sold for thirty dollars, you guys, and it is going to Texas. Nice. No, very nice. Okay. Last one in this first round. Do you remember this little baby? We got her on the junk jaunt for $1. And she's the cutest little thing. She has been open, so it's an open box. Yep. But she sold for... $47. $47. Now, I had said that she was worth $99, but that was if she was not opened. Right. So when I got her out ready to do, you know, get her ready, I could tell that she'd already been opened. Yep. So we sold her as open box. Yep. We're going to Florida. Yeah. For how much again? $47. $47. So very good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that is the beginning. That is the first half of the things that I have to ship out today. Um, now we're going to talk about our business from when we started this to where we got to right now. And then we'll show the rest of our West Salts. Okay, so the history of our reselling. Um, when I met Donna, we got married in 2001. And when I met her, she had a computer. I had no computers <laughs> at that time. And I took a big interest in the computers. And I kept messing up her computer because I would oh, change settings and everything. Lanta, he it was did. driving her nuts. Um, but in you know 2001. You get your computer set and you have it just like you like it. And everything comes up when you sit down to do something. Well, yeah. when you have to share it with a man, it doesn't happen that way anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I got too curious and started going and changing things and yeah. drove her nuts. But in 2001, I got on eBay, and when I was younger, I had bought a whole bunch of sports cards. And so I was doing eBay and selling sports cards, and that was back in the day where you would wait for a check. Oh, People yeah. People would buy it. They'd you mail had to you wait a check. For the check to clear. You waited seven days for it to clear, and then you sent out the item that they bought. So purchasing something took two weeks. Yeah, it was a long long process but that's how we got started on ebay and then i just did it kind of off and on here or there and then in the mid 2000 teens probably around 2015 well, when when jada was little so in 2003 we started selling more things like you sold a lot of your harvick nascar cars yeah i would do like, like collectibles that. on and off mm -hmm. stuff like that but then it kind of was quiet around the 2010 era around there and then in the and uh, then we found geocaching we found geocaching we found geo coins and geo uh what are path they called tags. path tags path tags are collectible items that geocachers make and they trade with others and you have collections mm -hmm. well me and a couple of friends we discovered that if we buy out lots like if somebody gets out of geocaching they'd sell their lots that those things sell for decent money on ebay mm -hmm. so we started flipping path tags and we did that for individual a few years. path tags like you would sell i mean they're little they're like yeah. the size of a between nickel. a dime and yeah nickel yep and you would sell them individually and ship them out in in cards yeah yeah so that was just a fun little side hustle always have been doing something on the side yeah. even before that before ebay like Donna's always had side hustles, whether it be garage sales or whether it Tupperware, be... Tupperware, Leah Sophia, then Tupperware again. Um, 
Primerica, yeah. we did. Yeah, we've done Amway. a little bit of everything. Yeah. Okay, then around 2016. Yep, yeah, a friend of ours introduced us to the dollar I auction. I think it was Kobe. It, it was Kobe. Kobe? Yeah. yeah, came from Kobe. Uh, found the dollar auction, and uh, we never, even from the beginning, never got into buying on the dollar auction, really. No. Donna would buy some things. I bought a couple was... things. Like I got some Scentsies and stuff like that. A couple things. But then I saw the potential. Woo, let's start selling stuff. And so I started putting some of our stuff on. And then actually Kobe had a whole bunch of stuff they brought over. Yeah. Clothes and stuff like that. Yep. So we started on the dollar auction and did that pretty heavily. Yep. And then in 2021. For other people. Yeah, like Ruth and Larry and then our neighbors. And our neighbors started saying, what's going on at your house? People are there all the time. Yeah, we had to explain <laughs> to our neighbors why there's people coming and going. We are not a drug house. We're a dollar <laughs> auction house. So then this went pretty heavy. And like in 2020 during COVID, it was a big thing because you could put the things out and without talking and touching yeah. the other people, like they could come pick it up. They call it porch pickup. So people would come and, I mean, you could see them, but you didn't have to like meet in public and so right. a lot of people did that transaction you yeah know. so by the time 2021 hit we were doing dollar auction so much that it was like a second full-time job like all of our oh, extra yeah. time we were both working a pepsi and we would do dollar auction all weekend every evening like all it was evening. just constant mm -hmm. so when and during break time i would i would bump stuff during lunch time i would bump stuff yeah Oh yeah, yeah, when she was working. So in 2021, in April of 2021, Donna quit her job mm -hmm. and she went full time. She would wanted to for quite a while, and I kept saying no, no, because I am the great papooer, and I papooed her all the way until April of 2021. In March of 2021, my brother-in-law was here sitting in the garage talking to us, and Donna said, "Jason, tell him that I can quit my job and do this full time." Okay. Back up, Jason is a finance. Financial advisor. Financial yes. advisor. And so we respect what he says. And I knew Steve respected what he said. <laughs> so we were sitting there waiting and um, he was kind of impressed with, you know, the process of stuff. Yeah. And Donna said, can I go tell him I can go full time? And he says, well, Donna, he says, the first thing you need to do is you need to write out a plan. So you have a business plan before you do that. Got and it. And Donna said, Stay right here. I'll be right back. <laughs> she came back and she had a notebook and she had pages and pages and pages of a business plan written out. She even had drawings and diagrams of how she wanted to arrange the garage. I mean, she was well prepared. So that, that goes to say, people, don't be afraid to dream. Yes. Just don't be afraid to dream. Even if you have a great poo poo -er, That's right. Go ahead and dream. So Donna, he looked through the plans and I, I remember it pretty clearly and I don't have a good memory. <laughs> And because he it says, changed your life forever. he says, wow, he goes, this is, this is really something. He goes, why haven't you gone full time yet? You're more than ready. And she looks over at he me says, and she, you've, you've already proven you can do it. Yeah. He looks, she, he looks over, she looks over at me and she points and she's like, talk to him. And <laughs> I was like, and he's like, Steve, she's, she's prepared. She, you know, it can do it. And Jason's like, what's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is you go get a job. It didn't work. Right. You'll get a job. You go back to work. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. When you do anything, what's the worst that can happen? You may fail. They're not going to take your birthday away. That's right. Well, when you do anything legal. They still gonna you take do, your birthday they away. They might take your birthday away, but if you're in jail, <laughs> it's not gonna be a happy birthday. So anyway, we jumped in. She said, "Yes, I'm gonna do this." She put in her notice. She quit her job. Well, after Jason said, "You know, go ahead. Why don't you?" I'm thinking, "Yeah, why don't we?" So you said, "Okay." Yeah, I did. You said, "Okay," and so I kind of planted the seed at work. And then um, my brother, my brother John, and uh, Carla, and Steve and I took a trip down to mom's and all the way down, we're talking about this and John's like, go for it. And he's a, he was a farmer and, um, you know, he was not afraid to do, jump in and do, he try was things, not afraid know. to do, and yep. he's worked his, you know, his whole life. He's worked hard and, and, and stuff. So anyway, he encouraged me, he said, you know, go ahead and do it, you know, go ahead and do it. So we get down to mom's and I said, guess what? And she says, don't quit your job. She says, just don't tell me. She says, get, I got something to tell you. And first thing she said was, just don't tell me you quit your job. John says too late. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I'd already put in my notice. <laughs> and so I had a month left to do at work. And uh, so that was an awesome trip with John and stuff. And he got back 
And four days later, he went to be with Jesus. And um, that was it for me. I was done. I was ready to work at home. I was ready to concentrate on us because, you know, a lot of times you know, not to put our co the company we worked for down. Right. But a lot of times when you work for corporate America, they don't, don't really care about you as much as you care about them. Well, they, they say they do and certain people do. Certain people but do. But the company as a whole, they care about the company and they care about you performing your job that you're hired to do. And I understand that. Right, right. But a lot, so many people and we too have put important things in their life on the right. back burner and blown them off because of their job. And I understand it. I completely understand mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. But it's But it's, the most important thing in your life is your loved ones, your kids, and your um what do I want to call it? Your legacy. Your legacy. Oh. You know, your relationships with people and what you leave behind when you go. Okay. You know? Yep. And I wasn't able to do a very good job at that when I was run down and I was working all the time and this working at home enables us to be us yes make a difference help other people have relationships with other people hibernate when we want to yes okay <laughs> all right we're getting off track here we're going with this is gonna be a long enough video so yeah, but that just tells gonna... you a little bit about us and and yeah yes so then she quit in april of 2021 and so we were then, doing doing a good job i was home working and yeah she was doing great i was still working and if you knew me then we started doing our, a little more we, we still we started youtube yeah in like march of 2021 so it was like somewhere around there we february dabbled. march april we started YouTube and I was happy on the YouTubes, but if you knew me in real life, like I was a very negative, angry person. And it was all centered around my work situation. I had a great career there. I worked there for a lot of years and it was great, but I had become very uncomfortable with the way things were and the way things were handled there. And so I was just like angry every day, like when I was working, I was very upset. And so one day in like around July, well, it was July when I quit. She called me and she said, you need to quit. I can't do this by myself. Because we had so much shipping and I needed to keep listing and I needed to keep packaging and we needed to do yeah. this. But he was the shipper. Yeah. I mean, I could do it, but he was he was that it guy. Had, it had gotten to a point where basically I was working full time and then I was coming home and working almost full time doing this. And it, she was having a hard time keeping up with everything. So, so I quit. So I quit. I said no at first, of course. Yeah, I poo pooed it. And then we looked into insurance and we looked into... He poo pooed it because he thought, what about insurance? He thought, insurance I don't want to lose in taxes. And I, he didn't want to lose his three weeks of paid vacation. <laughs> I, it sounds silly now. That's one of but, the things. Yeah. You know, so he didn't want to lose that paid vacation. And so, okay, what do we do when we have an issue? We check those problems off the yes. list. So we talked to um, an accountant and we talked to an insurance person. Yes. Yes. And we figured out all the, th the things. We figured out how to get insurance. Yeah, it wasn't near as big and scary as we no, thought it was. Just tackle each thing. Okay, we are rambling, and but we think it's all important. They're important but details to our do. story. We ramble. And we ramble. Uh, so then, once we got started, it was mid-2021, we were both full-time, and my goal was just a year, to see if a year from then, <laughs> we I could still be full-time, we could still be he, doing this. He, he said he'd try it for a year. I was well prepared that if I need to go get a job, I'll just go get a job, I don't care. It's no big deal. Um, but we kept doing it. And so the first year, so that less of that year, so there's a half a year, and then the whole next year, I would say... Our big focus was we sold for everybody and anybody to get inventory. We did garage sales and all the things that we do now too, but we would take on anybody that would be like, hey, I have some stuff, would you sell for me? And we would do it. Like we, Now listen though, we sold a whole bunch for our neighbor and then that expanded out to a whole bunch yes. of other people. So we oh, appreciate no, it's not, it's, I'm not that. saying that's a negative thing at no, all. No, but in doing all. that, we got a lot of followers on the dollar auction, people yes. who liked the quality of stuff that we had. And so it was really easy to turn stuff yeah. on dollar auction. And give a huge shout out to Jerry. He was one of our yeah. biggest contributors when we started selling for people because he brought over so much good stuff and he didn't care about like he trusted that you know we'll we'll pay him when we get stuff sold and whatever like he was so easy to work with he and had he had several friends and family members that did the same yeah, thing yeah he was really a huge starting point and ruth and larry too him and ruth and larry and kobe and, and their friends yeah. yep and kobe and so yeah. so anyway we did i would say our first year and a half was focus on just 
just flip it fast. Trying to keep doggy paddling and staying above water. Like that just to make see if it'll work, see if we can do this. Flip it fast, just gotta sell as much stuff as we can because we gotta try to make the bills. And, keep, and we did a good paid. job at it. Yes, we absolutely did. And we started to build the eBay. Right away we started to build the eBay and I don't know, after that twenty twenty two, we probably had five to seven hundred listings. Yeah. And we've slowly increased since then. So twenty twenty one ends, twenty twenty two tw okay, sorry. 2021, we start this. 2022 ends. It was the very end of 2022 when we were in a state sale and Donna, we were checking out and Donna <laughs> asked Leah at <laughs> now Metal Lark, said, what do you do with the stuff when you're done? And I was so mad at her and we ended up doing an estate clean out after that. He wasn't like mad, I'll beat you up mad. He was like, I can't believe you said that. Like, what are you doing? I don't want to <laughs> clean. I don't want all this stuff. We started doing after estate sale clean outs. Yeah. And thanks to Leah. Thanks to Leah. With Metal Lark. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we did that pretty well. Uh, we really got into that. We did a lot of clean outs. It turned out pretty we darn good. We learned a lot about the value of what we do. Yes. Because we first, did them for free at first. Yeah, we did it for free to get our foot in the door, and it was actually. It cost Leah us money. and another estate sale company um, owner and stuff that told us like you need to be charging and you need to be charging a little more so that you can be competitive with like your competition. Mm -hmm. We didn't really want to be just an estate sale clean out company, so we didn't like charge exuberant amounts. But we, you know, we started charging more and more, which but is, we, was great. We learned that we had to charge for. To all cover our expenses. our expenses. So we paid some helpers. Yeah. We paid for a U-Haul trailer all the time because we don't have our own trailer. We also paid for food for the helpers and yeah. our time. Because when we do a clean out, we wouldn't be listing. Right. We wouldn't be bumping on the dollar auction. So we'd lose two days, right. three days sometimes. Yeah. So all of 2023 and 20 into 2024, we did like a lot of clean outs. We and would, we kept everything and we sold everything kept, on the dollar Yeah, we tried auction. to get squeeze every nickel we could out of it. You know, we donate some stuff. We throw away a lot of stuff to the dumps, but we would try to get everything out of it, you know, whatever. And it worked. It worked fine. So now in 2024 comes around and then this spring, that's this year, this spring Meadowlark decides they're moving back to Western Nebraska and they're going to expand their business to the whole state of Nebraska, not just in Lincoln. They were the main company that we worked with. Here in the, like, yeah, here in town. The main, there is another couple companies that we've done clean outs for, but not like the relationship we have with Leah and Bill. Mm -hmm. So when they left, it really slowed the clean outs down. Oh yeah. It really did. And so then in 2024, like, so then it started slowing down the dollar auction. And then this summer, early this summer and into the summer, we noticed the dollar auction started kind of going down and it's slowed. I wonder if it's the economy. Yeah, I, I think it has a lot to do with the economy. The prices of groceries I've and bills so and everything high. else are sky high. And so, you know, that factors in a lot. But the dollar auction also, as much as we love it, and we do, and we've been very blessed by it, mm -hmm. we also understand it is a very limited market. There's only so many people on there and they can only buy so much stuff. Right. And so, you know, it's, it is what it is. And I'll show you a couple examples of stuff on the dollar auction right now that kind of explain what we're talking about. But so that brings us up to where we are today or where we were a month ago. Okay. And so let's get into, we're going to show the rest of the things that sold. And then we're going to talk about what's changed, kind of what our mindset is. And we're going to show, talk about exactly why we think we really have opportunity to really grow our business Switch in huge up. ways mm -hmm. all right let's get into the second half of our what solds where do you want to start a turtle a turtle there you go we got this little guy from of course the turtle buyout and he sold for a what 9.99 12.99 12 12.99 going to tennessee tennessee and then we sold a little cross stitch kit yep just a small one, uh, four by six. So we sold that one for five dollars. That come from a buyout we call Giles or Giles in Omaha. That was a while ago. That too. was a really good buyout, man. That yeah. was great. That was um, quilting and fabrics Sewing, and yeah. Santas. A lot of brand new DVDs and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was a couple years ago. Man, time flies. <laughs> yes. And then the next thing is, I guess I won't take it out of the box. It is a mini fan diffuser. And we got this from the Junk Jaunt. Yep. And that sold for $12 and it's going to Missouri. Missouri. 
And then Steve sold two different um, Gentle Baby. It's a five milliliter, 0.5 milliliter, uh, what do you call it? Es essential oil. Essential oil. And that one sold for $19.99 right there. And then he had another one. This one's called Evergreen Essence. Yep, and that is a uh, 1.5 or 15 milliliter, I'm sorry. And that sold for $14.50. And that one is going to Illinois. And did I say where the other one was? I don't think so. I don't think so either. So it's going to Missouri. Nice. This is another item we got from the Junk Jaunt, that very same buyout. It is Shave Cream Monet Black. And that's going to Missouri as well. <laughs> And that sold for $16.99. $16.99. And then I have a couple of cup cozies here. Viewer sales. Viewer sales. Yay. We love viewer sales. So thank you, thank you. This goes to Janine in California. And she got a little Halloween. Um, I call it my pumpkin spice cozy because it's orange and black yeah and it's got a little pumpkin on there yep and then and it comes with a sticker and then she also got a little ghost yes. one and so those are going to janine in california those yep. are five dollars each so thank you janine oh there was a message yes. so when i pulled it up to see where this purchase was going uh she put a message on the purchase and it says i've been watching you two hard working couple for well over a year enjoy watching your sweet silly crazy sweaty at times videos <laughs> ha ha so that's awesome thank you so much janine we appreciate the support that's awesome thank you so much speaking of support you have another viewer sale we do these came yesterday i think, I think while so. we were working outside um candace in oregon bought two pairs of slippers and each pair comes with a sticker so i've got a blue pair and i made those um and a black and tan pair of slippers and that wiped you out on slippers that wiped me out so now you're doing making yes. them again yes so let me grab one while she does that, I'll just tell you, Candace commented on one of our videos and says, just purchased a couple pairs of slippers. Will be perfect Christmas gift for my mom. My grandpa used to make slippers and that, like that, and she loved them. Love your videos. That's awesome. So yeah, that did um, buy out everything we had listed. So I had four more already made, a little bit bigger size, listed those. And so last night I started on another pair. So I've got some purple ones ready to go. I just have to finish them up. So they'll be out there today. Um, but yeah. Viewer sales are fun. Viewer sales are so much fun. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, Candace, for your purchase. Okay, what's next? I just want to talk about crochet things now. <laughs> okay. Um, next up, we have a Olympus have oh, N. Okay, Olympus. I want to say, I have something I want to say about this one. Um, when we're out garage selling and we're kissing frogs and we're not finding anything, the thing we say, and we know some other people think this way too, it just takes one camera. Now, I will say this camera didn't come from garage sales. Actually found this, somebody put this camera on dollar auction and I got, I won it on the dollar auction for $28, I believe. And I did, I think, have to get a battery charger for it off eBay for like five bucks, but I won it on dollar auction for $28. And Look this, at it, it had the little tag yep. on the case, but here's the camera. This is an Olympus Stylus Oops. TG4, uh, TG4 16 megapixel waterproof digital camera. And that sold for $180 plus shipping and it's going to indiana nice so yeah we did buy something on the dollar auction i think this morning we said we didn't very much oh yeah absolutely i don't buy much i've bought a few things on the dollar auction usually it's something i'm trying to flip one time i bought editing video editing software i got it for two dollars and i sold it for two hundred dollars so yeah i'm always on the lookout for something to buy but we don't buy for like collections unless don is buying yarn yeah yarn yeah yarn all right, what else we got? We have the last box of these four uh, luncheon plates. We sold um, a big lot of these last week, yep. but here are the designs. Yep, and this one sold for $18, and it's going to Illinois. So a lot of times these Sakura, I don't know if that's how you say it or not, uh, packages of dessert dishes, um, those sell well. And then just sold this morning. Well, just when we started filming, yeah, honestly. Is a 
DVD, The Outsiders, and it's unopened. Yep, sold for $14. It is to a repeat buyer, so if you watch the channel, thank you very much. Yes. We appreciate it. Uh, it's going to New York. Oh, nice. And then the last thing, no, second to the last thing. We have two more, one more thing after this. Okay. Um, we got these books from the Turtle Buyout. We bought, or bought, we got a lot of uh, books. And so what I did is I lotted up the author, and this is a series actually, and um, sold the series plus a few extras with it. And this whole set sold for $100. Yep. It was. It was listed for like 130, I think, 120. 124. .99. And somebody up sent an offer for 100, and we took it, and it is going to Texas. How many books are in this box? There is 28 plus. Plus a few. Uh, plus others. Yeah. So there's a set of 28 plus extras by yeah. the same author. Um, this author is Sherilyn. It's thir 38 books. <clears throat> Sherilyn Kenyon. So that's the main author. Yeah. Um, so and I I'll, think they're vampire type love story type books. So what I'll do for shipping, I mean, these are obviously, especially soft cover, like it's not that big of a deal. I'm actually, I'll get the lid for this. I'll ship it right in this box. I will cut it down and fold it down so it's this, this Flat. high. And I'll just ship it in this box right here. Do we have the lid? Uh, I'm sure we can find one. Okay. And then, turn around. Okay, they haven't paid yet. Oh, but, sorry. But you can show it because if they pay, I'm going to get rid of it. This guy sold. He's a 1985 Cabbage Patch Kid. And the box is a little bit damaged, but he's still tied in there. He's never been out of the box. And he sold for $60. Yeah. We took a good offer on him uh, this morning, and we expect that it'll get paid for and it'll be gone. But I guess if next week he's still in the videos, then I guess he's still here. But <laughs> we expect he'll be gone probably today. So happy to move along the big items so we can replace it with other big items. Yes. All right, let's go out to the garage. Any change of scenery? Yeah, we're gonna we open did. the garage door, and we're gonna oh, so talk nice about our future and ex and explain exactly why we think we have a lot of potential for growth. Okay, so in the garage, here's what we look like right now. Uh, it looks like kind of a mess, but we're working. Here is just empty boxes that we keep for clean out situations. And then back here is all the stuff from Utica. We went to the salvage yard clean out. Um, we are, we have started. It may not look that like it. That video isn't out yet, so they don't know what you're talking about. Actually, it is. This comes out after that. Oh. Yeah, that's the... Yeah, I haven't actually made the Utica video yet. It's all recorded. That'll come out probably tomorrow on Saturday. You'll probably get this on Monday. I don't know. But we have actually started working this. We've worked through several boxes. We're finding some good stuff. It's going to be well worth it, but we have a long ways to go. Okay, so a few videos ago we talked about we're going to shift to eBay, okay? If you historically watched all of our videos and you heard us talk about <laughs> shifting to eBay... You'll notice that it's a theme that every few months we mention we're going to shift yeah. to more eBay, but we've but never done serious. it. this is serious. Yeah, talking about something and doing something are two completely different things. Like quitting your job. Yeah, like, yes, exactly. So we mentioned we're going to change our business and we're going to switch to eBay. And as much as we were like, yeah, we're going to do that, we, we really didn't put all the thought and all the dynamics into it until now. We... We've really talked to this a lot and we've actually started doing this and we want to kind of share our results and like what we're figuring out and what we're learning by doing this. The thing with the dollar auction slowing down is it's, it's, it's hard to maintain the level of income that we were doing. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's scary because with the dollar auction, it's instant cash. And fast so money. fast money, they pay in cash, they, they pay Venmo, whatever, and it's 24 hours and you sell it and boom, you're gone and it's, and it's gone and you move stuff quickly. And so what's scary is we're listing on eBay. It takes a little bit of time. Yeah. We can list bigger things and get bigger amounts yeah. for things in the same amount of work as it takes to list a small thing. But it's not an instant sale. Yeah. I'm going to, hold on. I'm going to try something here. Okay. We got, <laughs> we got it on a platform now. So okay, don't move. now we're good. Now I can use my hands. 
drives yeah, her nuts. Not she this hates one. that. You can use that uh, one. <laughs> I'm at the right height where he, he uses this hand. It's like. Yes. I actually started putting my hand in my pocket because when I'm talking, I'll tap her really hard or, you know, do things. Do you remember those videos, guys? I'd be constantly tapping her. <laughs> Drive her nuts. Anyway, we digress again. We digress again, a lot. That's, yeah, that's, that's us. All right. So, what, the one thing that's always scary about switching to eBay is. In order to do so, we need to take a lot of time and push it into our eBay, and that's going to slow down the dollar auction significantly, and so our income, because you can't instantly make more income on eBay. I mean, you can, but you still have to list things and get things going, but our fast cash in the house from the dollar auction, mm -hmm. we have to slow that way, way, way down, and so... That's why we've always, oh yeah, we're going to increase eBay, but we don't really do it because... Because we're addicted to the quick yeah. turnover. Yeah. So, but we are doing it this time. We're, we've taken the chances. We're taking the risk. We have experienced the drop-off in the dollar auction. And oh. it's going to be okay. However, we know that we need to get through a time when we are bringing in less money in order to get there. We are not, so just so you know, we watch YouTubers, we watch super popular YouTubers, we watch not so popular YouTubers. We consider ourselves a very small channel, very <laughs> yeah. not popular YouTuber, and we're, that's cool. We're, we're going to talk about YouTube too at the end. Um, but we look at the super popular ones and we just assume that their life is great and they have you know, lots of money in the bank and their bills are all paid and everything's great, People right? People may assume that by watching us because we're always try we always try to be happy and not be. Yeah. But, but we're just like everybody else and we're living month to month. Yeah. You know? We we are so we've been doing this three and a half years and I will what I will tell you is we don't talk about financials because people view, skew it and whatever yeah. have opinions and we don't care what people's opinions are. I will tell you that after three and a half years we're still getting by, but we're just getting by. And we don't want to just get by because we want to start putting more money into our I would retirement. Love to build and we the, want to the retirement accounts. We have a teeny teeny tiny one that you carried over from Pepsi. But. Well, not teeny teeny tiny, but no, we have a we have a couple of retirement accounts and stuff, but we stopped putting money into them and we're so we always just what I always said, if you watch the videos, I was always like, as long as my bills are paid, it's good enough. Well, now we have established we can do this and our bills right. can be paid. But Over a three-year period, we have remained the same as yes. far as like our income, our uh, ratio to how many are listed and how many are sold. So we know that yeah. we can do it. Our sell-through rate, that was something else I want to talk about. The sell-through rate since we started this, since we listed our first 500 things, has always been around 50%. Usually a little bit less, like 45%. So we know that we're pretty good at this because we talk to not others. Bragging. No, 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 not bragging at all. There are people with ridiculously mm. high sell-through right. rates, but we know that at a 50% sell-through rate, we can maintain we, it. When we've maintained it for over three years, we know that if we double our input, we can double our output. Correct. Right? Yes. So, so we know that we know how to do this. We know we can do this. So anyway... We've been just getting by, but we don't want to just get by. Just getting by was really good enough for the first couple of years, mm -hmm. especially for me, because it was always just, as long as I don't have to go put up, <laughs> fill out applications, yeah. I'm happy. Well, now I know we have the track record and we know we can do this and we can do this really well. So now it's time to take it from just getting by to really making a business and making a life out of it you know because i don't i actually want to keep doing this until like i kick into, the bucket on into retirement yes you know yeah and so we have maxed out what we found when looking at all this stuff we have maxed out the dollar auction we have listed hard year and a half ago especially like right before clean outs the end of the clean outs we maxed out dollar auction mm -hmm. we would have so many things listed and now that is slowed down and we found how much time it takes so we then we have between 50 and 100 items on at a time every single day every at, single at point day. In time mm -hmm. yeah and so then when we got doing cleanouts, we had that you know last year 
we kind of max out clean outs like we love that we get paid it's fast cash to try to get the money for over the weekend to get the clean out done but we are over 50 years old we don't have a big <laughs> business where we have employees yeah. so we would hire our friends and you know a couple other people and our wonderful to do friends work. would come for and work for nothing yes even though we would fight them but we really we took on any clean out we could we maxed it out and what we found was although we we like it and it's fun it's a change of pace it became a heavy, heavy heavy weight because things are really heavy and no, it, it also became heavy because we just had so much stuff to move dollar options right. type stuff and that's the result of it so while doing it it usually would take three days because usually it's a couple days and then it's a day to kind of recover what we found was over those three days we're not listing on ebay so ebay slows down we're not listing on dollar auction because we're busy doing this and then so we slow our income down but we get that fast pay payday of getting paid to do the job but then we would find ourselves in the garage here with a garage full and probably 75 80 percent of that stuff was, was dollar, dollar auction, auction. Mm -hmm. and so then we had to get posted on the dollar auction mm -hmm. and we would kind of neglect ebay we've talked about doing more ebay for years mm -hmm. but we keep bringing in so much dollar auction stuff that it's impossible to give ebay the attention that it needs for it to grow right well yeah and so the last few cleanouts that we've done we've changed that ha you know practice yeah. as well we've let more the things last one we've go. done especially we've let more things go we've recycled more we've taken you know metals in we have donated more and we've actually ended the life cycle for some things <laughs> yes. you know and there are some Throw, things that throwing you away sounds just... bad but everything has a life cycle even material items so you know so yeah if it's not selling or if it's i mean you just know yeah so basically we making smarter decisions is what we've been doing yeah when we do a clean out and so um that's changed the amount of items that come in here to be worked yes. and so those items are higher quality higher dollar type items that we're able to put on ebay rather than just move on the dollar auction right and so we it's been about a month since we really started hammering on ebay our ebay we were getting really bummed out because we were down to almost a thousand listings which <laughs> for us believe that it hasn't been under a thousand for a long time it was right at a thousand when we went to planes to profit last year yeah because we were really impressed that other people were like twice as big as us twice or four times yeah. as big i mean you a know. lot of listings so about a month ago is when we kind of decide we're going to do this and so we're talking now because of the results we're going to talk about the things yes. that we've seen yes and we've hammered 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 on it and now our listings are about 1360 yeah 1365 yesterday and then we sold some stuff so, so so we've gained up you know we've we've increased it a couple hundred at least over like the last month i mean we started building longer ago but so we've seen a growth in that now have our sales increased you know what yes they didn't at first because we just list stuff and it you know it that. takes some time to get things moving again mm -hmm. But I can tell you right now for sure, we have this last month, and especially the last couple of weeks, our overall income mm -hmm. as a as a household is less. We've we're in the dip. Okay, we've been in the dip for a few weeks, dips and it's scary, it sucks. Dips are scary, but now eBay is really starting to climb and we are making good sales and it's we're making inching. way more consistent sales it's yeah. not like doing this yeah it's, it's not skyrocketing <laughs> but it is definitely noticeable and we're definitely beginning to see the fruits seeing the fruits of our labor yes yeah we think that we feel like if we quit we're not gonna okay we're not gonna quit dollar auction because dollar auction is a great thing for certain situations yes we're not going to quit estate cleanouts because it is a nice change of pace and it is and something I different to do and we like do doing it. it yeah and we do get some good inventory from that and stuff but we'll just be more picky and donate and throw away more than you know try to get every nickel out of every last thing so we're not going to quit any of that and storage units they have their they have their place in our life too because they're fun to yeah. do they're fun videos to make and it's Especially fun to, in the to winter hunt. time but we feel like if we consistently put in more effort to ebay there is no reason we've seen how fast we can grow in the last month 
and listings and we there's no reason why we can't be at you know we're at 1350 we can't be at 2000 listings by the end of the year oh, and then wow. next year yeah i mean we can really grow it and then that dip that income dip is going to come back with ebay because we have maximized dollar auction and that didn't get us where we need to be we have maximized estate cleanouts that didn't get us where we need to be we have an estate sale video our stay sale we have a storage unit video that really took off and it has a couple hundred thousand views and so we thought that's the train we need to jump on <laughs> so then we did a bunch of storage units and storage unit videos for like two months we did like quite a few and none of them took off like that so we're like okay ebay youtube is not our train it's ebay it's you know, ebay well here here's the thing too we have a lot of people that uh, and some of you who are watching right now, the ones that stay till the end, who are loyal followers and yes. who watch and comment and we love that. And it is because of you and your watching and stuff that we do get a tiny little bit from, from YouTube. Yes. And so yes, we do get a little tiny bit and that's the best way you can support us. <laughs> You know yeah, that yeah. and cup cozies and slippers but yeah. um anyway so we still will do that and our family keeps track of us that way our friends who moved yeah. away watch and feel like they're part of our life yeah i want to talk a little bit about youtube just so you kind of know like so for our future what i see us doing is mainly being ebay sellers we started youtube if you haven't been following along and you don't know our like our backstory we started YouTube just so our moms could follow us and see what we're doing <laughs> yeah. when we went full time. And we are going to continue to do that. Hi, Come Dan. Come on over and introduce yourself to our eBay friends. You want, you want or, to be I mean, on our YouTube? YouTube friends. <laughs> sure. Beautiful day. All right, we have a visitor. <laughs> Hold on. Say hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I expected. <laughs> do you have any jokes to tell before? Oh, my goodness. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I'll have to look it up here real quick. I have a photo of it. <laughs> okay. He's our jokester. He keeps us entertained. Yep. I put you on the right. spot. He's mm -hmm. he's struggling. He but, also brings card tricks over. He's amazing with card so tricks. So how did the barber win the race? He took the shortcut. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Right. He does boom. better than that. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll haircut. jump in and finish in a minute. He We're gonna chat with Dan here for a minute. Yesterday. Okay, we had a nice visit with the neighbor, Dan. And now we just, we're going to wrap this up, but we had three more little topics that I want to mention about all of this. Um, the first one is that we really feel strongly that this is what we're supposed to do. We think God put us in this, in this position yes. and that we are bound to succeed if we just trust him and trust the process. Um, because even though we've talked about how we're just kind of getting by, you know what, whenever situations have arrived that... Oh, yeah. that there were opportunities Car repairs you know whenever we've had an issue they've been covered by yeah. an opportunity. some sales whatever yeah. when opportunities come up and maybe we didn't have that much money like but there's always enough money to take take the, the opportunity buyout, you know the different yeah we have a lot less cash coming in and going out than we did before but when the last Paper buyout money, came not up like money money but cash yeah but when the last bio came up and uh, he wanted 400 for it, well, we had that. Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But even like the, what was the, the fire buy, $1,500? The fire buy. We, at that time, had that. Like, we we feel like we've been put in position. Even the Iowa opportunity yeah. to go to Iowa and do that. And that yeah, we've had a, a lot of situations over the last three and a half years where even though it's been a little rough here and there, we felt like God's got our back and we're where we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, that was just one thing we want to touch on. Another thing was about uh, Donna. She's had about some me. struggles lately oh. with this new everybody. new mental with this new mental. Uh, I have space. to stay busy all the time. Like I've got to be doing something all the time, um, and so when we're not constantly bumping our stuff and listing our stuff and you know working the little things for the dollar auction, um, I. I can come out here and list on eBay, but then in the evening I'm done. Yeah. Like I don't have anything to bump or, or, you know, whatever. So I have a little bit more time on my hands. So I have been able to make cup cozies and make do more crocheting, crocheting and just, just kind of just be able to have a little more time to focus on other things because doing the dollar I, auction is time consuming. I actually cooked a couple of meals, which yeah. I don't yeah. normally do. Yeah. 
but so yeah so that's nice we are finding a little more time i mean we're still we're we're so far behind on like things oh, that man. projects around the house that, the yard the house but and... we're actually like trying starting to catch up some of these projects mm -hmm. there to do list things and then the last thing i just wanted to talk about is the youtube channel we've already touched kind of on it yeah but where does the youtube channel fall in i had a great an interesting conversation with Corey from grams and pops and i want to share this with you like because i think his outlook on the youtube is perfect so we talk about successes and failures of youtube and whatever and he they have about four or five thousand subscribers so they're you know a little bigger, bigger than we are but you know we, we're similar in the youtube world we're pretty similar um he told me one day, he's like, I think our YouTube channel is at the perfect size. And I was like, oh, whatever. You know, everybody wants to get bigger. And he explained something that makes complete sense. He said that bigger channels, they, their YouTube, like the big, big channels, whatever it be, and it doesn't matter if it's reselling or something else, mm -hmm. their their income is based on YouTube. Their, yeah. their, their career. Josh from Harry Tornado will tell you straight up. He is a YouTuber that resells. He started out as a reseller that YouTubes. Yeah. But he's always wanted to get into like the YouTube thing. So he is now, he is a YouTuber that resells. And so they have to have content and they have to keep doing it in order to have content for their YouTube. Yeah. As long as we remain a reseller that YouTube's on the side, the reselling holds our income and everything else. And then if we make some money on the side with YouTube, it's income, it's extra. None of the money that we've made on YouTube factors into our budget. We haven't made that much money and it's not part of our budget. So what that means is if we don't feel like doing videos or if our videos don't do very well or something, it's not, there's not pressure on us from YouTube and trying to come up with the next clever video or the next fun, you know, something to thumbnail, uh, uh, clickbait thumbnail to try to get more views. Well, our we can just do is, our own thing and be ourselves. Yeah, our channel has always been our own self yeah. i mean it's not sometimes we try a clickbaity title but most of the time it is just us and yeah. you know sometimes i wish we had more views oh and sure and we don't like that, not but... want the channel to grow we want more views we want more subscribers we would like more income from youtube but as long as we keep youtube where it's not a source of our income mm -hmm. that it, you're it leaves on. us yeah it yeah. leaves us free to treat it however we want to without the pressures of having to perform you know what even even that month or two that that one video just took yeah, off yeah that was another way god blessed us when we needed the income yeah. because that was two two months of really a nice little check um to help us through so yeah now it's you know leveled off it's leveled off quite a bit and and we're okay with that so yeah we're going to keep doing youtube as long as we want to just because we still do it just for fun yeah we're monetized but we do this just for fun and it is not part of our it's nowhere on our spreadsheet for uh yeah. have to pay the bills and we need this much from youtube so yeah uh anyway but don't worry mom we'll still do it for you as long as we are having fun and some people are still watching we will keep doing it yeah all right, that has got to be long enough, I would think. That's a long video. So a long video. Thank you all who are still watching. Yes. And um, we appreciate you. Know that we appreciate you. it. We say yes. it in every video, but know that we really mean it. We totally we appreciate do. every view. I'm sorry. I keep, keep, keep coming in. Keep swinging in. Yeah, stay back. <laughs> it's personal right. space here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching yes. and supporting us. And we love your comments. Keep them coming. Thank you yep. so much for commenting. That fills our cup. I've said that before. You know, we do work for ourselves. And so sometimes... We Sometimes, don't get interaction with people near as much as we used to. It's hard to... And, and my best friend moves. So it's hard to keep, you know, that yeah. your, your cup filled. And so your comments do that. So thank you for that. Yep. All right, cool. We're going to go. I got a ship. We got things to do. We, we got, Tomorrow there's a home football game, and Donna has stuff marked for the booth, and a lot of it's Huskers, so we got to get that to the booth today. Got to get the shipping done. We got lots to do, so we're going to go. So thank you all for watching. We are Happy Heart Treasures. I'm Steve. I'm Donna. Oh, something else you want to say? Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Like, and subscribe, <laughs> share with your friends. I think I said that earlier, but yeah, yeah like, and subscribe, share with your friends. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye.